नमस्कार प्राध्यापक राम बापट स्मृति व्याख्यान माले वती अपने सर्व मी स्वागत करते वर्षी सुधा संकेत स्थला मध्यम दृकश्राव्य स्वरूप भेटतो व्याख्यान मालेत नव पुष्प गुंफल जता मनापास आनंद होतो या वर्षी जो व्याख्यान देने अपने लाभ लहुआयामी व्यक्तिमत्व प्रख्यात नृत्यांगना अभिनेत्री कार्यकर्त्या विचारवंत सुश्री मल्लिका साराभाई व्याख्या विषय है ब्रेकिंग सैलोज कप्पेबंदी तोड़ता हे व्याख्यान इंग्रजी भाषे हो नोंद कृपया अपन सर्वानी घी विनंती है आता श्री मकरन साठे मी विनंती करते कि प्राध्यापक राम बापट स्मृति व्याख्यान माला सुरू कर भूमिका मांडावी आजर आज प्रमुख वक्त्या श्री मल्लिका साराभाई परिचय कर रिक्वेस्ट टू मकर काइंडली ब्रीफ द फंक्शन ऑफ इंस्टॉलिंग दिस मेमोरियल लेक्चर सीरीज एंड देन टू इंट्रोड्यूस अवर ऑनरेबल स्पीकर मैडम मल्लिका साराभाई मिस्टर मकर प्लीज कंटिन्यू थैंक यू वेरी मच गजान गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू This is the ninth year of Professor Ram Bapat uh, Memorial Lecture. As many of you know, Professor Ram Bapat was an extraordinary intellectual, a trained political scientist, uh, who expired in 2012. My association with him was of more than 30 years, and I gained in so many ways, like so many others. I mean, from multiple pro pro uh, professions: social scientists, philosophers, ground level social political workers. writers artists i mean from people from every field uh, he, he was truly uh, what one can call a versatile genius uh, and everybody has benefited from his uh, 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 from the interaction with him we always talk about divisions in the society and many a times we mean economic divisions and class divisions cultural divisions gender divisions but there is another divisions which division which is equally uh, troublesome and that is between the, uh, the intellectuals uh, the politicians the artists and the common people uh, i mean uh, not that everyone is not a common person but mr bapat tried to bridge this gap single handed and this gap has been growing for last few decades now a person like me does not have this capacity bapat was truly a person like socrates i mean he did not write much but he was always available in uh, at the crossroads for anybody to speak to and anybody to get advice anybody to debate anybody to fight with so a person like me or nobody else can really do do that single handedly as he did uh, so the best choice left for us was to install a lecture in his memory three of his major concerns were the social the political and the creative uh, we have asked every speaker and we have been uh, very lucky to have very excellent speakers till na, till uh, uh, date uh, the, we we have given them absolute free choice of uh, the, their exact topic but we have requested them to base this topic on this tripod the social the political and the uh, creative prashi foundation has been and uh, is trusty uh, ms parimat choudhary has been very kind uh, just by one phone call uh, she has been helping us and prashi foundation has been helping us for our last 9 years 
The series was inaugurated by the eminent art critic Mr. Sadanand Menon in 2013. Subsequent lectures were given by internationally renowned artist, writer, and educationist Mr. Golam Muhammad Sheikh, well known thinker Professor Shiv Vishwanathan, the renowned poet K. Sachinanandan, eminent singer T. M. Krishna, historian Prachit T. Eshpande, well known philosopher Professor Sundar Sarukai, and Professor Somyavrata Choudhury. This year, we have been lucky to get a multifaceted personality, the eminent dancer, actor, thinker, and activist, Ms. Malika Starabai. Uh, Malika Starabai is extremely well-known internationally, and her productions and achievements are so numerous that I am not going to enlist all of them here. I will mention in broad strokes only the fields in which she has done immense work, otherwise we will be left with no time to hear her speech itself. She is one of India's leading choreographers and dancers, in constant demand as a soloist and with her own dance company, Darpana, creating and performing both classical and contemporary works. She has a PhD in organizational behavior and has been the coordinator of the prestigious art institution, Darpana Academy of Performing Arts, for nearly 40 years now. Malika first made a name for herself in India as a film actress, but soon was recognized as an exceptional young dancer in the classical forms of Bharatanatyam and the Kuchipudi. At 18, she won her first of many national and international awards. A few prominent ones, very few of that, that I'll be mentioning here, among them being Padmabhushan, International Lifetime Achievement Award 2009 by, by International Congress of Women, Crystal Award 2009 by Davos World Economic Forum, Medan International Theatre Award by Theater, Pasta International Theatre Award USA, nominated as one among 1,000 women for Nobel Peace Prize 2005 and Knight of the Order of Arts and Letters, French government 2002. She has, uh, since then, she has performed at major venues all over the world and has been associated with eminent institutes. She first came into international notice as most of you must have known and must have actually seen this uh, performance in some way or other as an actress when she played the role of Draupadi in Peter Brooks, the Mahabharata for five years, first in uh, French and then in English, performing in France, Germany, Spain, Switzerland, the United States, Australia, Japan, and Scotland. She has done many wonderful TV shows and films. She, she writes columns regularly in many prestigious newspapers and articles in notable journals, which are thought provoking. Equally importantly, she has authored and edited many books. Always an activist, for, uh, uh, for education, human rights, and women's empowerment, Malika began using her work for social change. In 1989, she created the first of her hard-hitting solo theatrical works, Shakti, The Power of Women. Since then, Malika has created numerous stage productions <coughs> which have raised awareness, highlighted crucial issues, and advocated change, several of which have toured internationally as well as throughout India. In the mid-90s, Malika began to develop her own contemporary dance vocabulary and went on to create short and full-length works that have been presented throughout India and in over 50 countries all over the world. Ms. Malika Sarabhai Ulu will be speaking on the broad topic, Breaking Silos. Thank you all for coming for this lecture. I'm sure you are in for a wonderful treat. Please mute your computers. I now invite Ms. Malika Sarabhai to, to deliver a lecture. Malika. सबसे बड़ा खुलासा म्यूजिशन करने जा रहा है पिंजरा तोड़ एक्टिविस्ट नताशा नरवाल who was jailed last year in May they have been allegedly inciting Delhi and does not amount to terrorism activity it's a judgment that could have major implications for those who've been arrested for their Delhi High Court on Tuesday granted bail to Pinjra Thor. यही वजह है कि आज दिल्ली पुलिस की क्राइम ब्रांच ने उस वक्त वहां पर दंगे कराए जाए ताकि हम लाइव लाइफ में आएं और ये मुद्दा बड़ा बन जाए। इसकी पूरी प्लानिंग Pinjra Thor ग्रुप की कुछ छात्राओं ने की थी। अगर मान लो मेरी बेटी को बहुत लंबे टाइम जेल में रहना पड़ा और एक वक्त आए वो मेरे को देख ही ना पाए। Growing age मैं ना देख पाऊं। मेहरबान जज साहिब महावीर नरवाल मर गया है 
हाजत साहेब नताशा का पिता इस जग में नहीं रहा मेहरबान जज साहेब वह समझदार बेटी कुछ दिन पहले आपके दरबार में आई थी उसने ये नहीं था कहा कि मेरे ऊपर मुकदमा न चलाओ उसने ये नहीं कहा था कि मुझे दोष मुक्त कर दो उसके वकील ने बिनती की थी कि उसे दे दो दो पल उसने अपने पिता का मुख देखना है उसके साथ दो बातें करनी है वो बीमार है वो तेरह साल की थी जब उसकी माँ गुजर गई उसका पिता ही उसकी माँ था गहरी छाया था वो आप जानते हो जज साहेब आपको बहुत अच्छी तरह से पता है इस लड़की ने दिल्ली के दंगे नहीं थे करवाए आपको बहुत अच्छी तरह से पता है इस लड़की ने दिल्ली के दंगे नहीं थे करवाए वो निर्दोष है वो समाज के पिंजरे तोड़ना चाहती थी आपने उसे ताकत के पिंजर में कैद कर दिया आप बहुत ताकतवर है जज साहेब आप मुंसिफ है आप उसे वो दो पल दे सकते थे कि वो अपने पिता का मुख देख सकते आप उसे और कैद में रख सकते हैं जज साहेब आप उसे उम्र कैद की सजा दे सकते हैं आपके पास ताकत है आप इंसाफ कर सकते हो जज साहेब नहीं मैंने जो कहा झूठ है आप सब कुछ कर सकते हो जज साहेब परंतु आप उसे अपने पिता संग बात करने के लिए दो पल नहीं दे सकते आप वो दो पल नहीं दे सकते हैं जज साहब आपके पास वो दो पल देने वाला दिल नहीं है जज साहब आपके पास ताकत है आपके पास इंसाफ है आपका दिल साफ सफाक है आपने कहा था आप उसकी फरियाद सोमवार को सुनोगे वो सोमवार अब नहीं आएगा जज साहब वो सोमवार अब कैलेंडर से गायब हो गया है जज साहब आप सारी उम्र इस सोमवार की तलाश करते रहोगे हा जज साहेब Art to me is one of the most powerful languages we have. In a world where we don't want to listen, we don't want to understand, we don't want to hear another point of view, we don't want a disagreeing view. It is perhaps only art, artistically done art, artfully done art, that can get through. the walls that we build up and reach a place where we are open vulnerable and open to change i am deeply honored to be giving this lecture today the people who have given it ahead of me are fairly daunting in what they have done professor bapat himself was an extraordinary man and i want to thank the organizers for inviting me you know i was brought up in a household of science and dance and uh, as i grew up there were dance students everywhere there was my mother rehearsing as i went to school as i came back from school as we did our homework there was the sound of the beating of the stick that is so much part of bharatanatyam training and one of my early memories is of two early memories actually one of my mother creating a piece 
while she was learning Bharatanat, while she was learning Gujarati, and her teacher was teaching her Gujarati by reading newspapers. And she kept reading of young girls in Saurashtra after marriage, killing themselves by burning themselves with petrol or jumping into the well. And she couldn't figure this out. And she went around asking friends like the poet Uma Shankar Joshi and the writer Jayanti Dalal what this was about. And she found out about what we now know as dowry deaths. And she created a piece called Memory is a Ragged Fragment of Eternity. In order to make it accessible to all audiences, she did away with lyrics in any language. And she used the bowl of Bharatanatyam, takita, taka, dimi, takita, which are normally neutral, imbibed them with emotions of hatred and derision and hope and joy and love, and created a piece that shook audiences everywhere. I had never wanted to be a professional dancer. I thought it was far too much hard work. But I grew up assuming that all artists use the arts to talk of what bothered them or what they felt was wrong with society. Many years later, there was a terrible killing of Dalit youth by upper caste men in a village near here called Ranamalpur. And Amma created a piece which had no sound except the sound of sticks beating the earth or sticks beating bodies. And I still get terrifying goosebumps when I think of the piece. But as I became a dancer, I never thought that I could create like that. And in many ways, it was the five years that I spent with Peter Brook from 1984 to 1990, that made me into a different kind of artist. One is it pushed me away from anything that I considered a support system. I was alone. I was a new mother with a newborn child. I was to perform in French, a language I didn't know. I was alone in Paris with people I didn't know. These were free cell phone days. It would take three days to book a call to India. Everything came on slow mode. Anything that was sent from one country to another took anything between seven and 10 days to come. So it was a very different world. And I was lonely, anguished, hating what was happening with me, hating every rehearsal. But I stuck to it. I stuck to it. And what it made me do is it made me go into myself to be able to defend what I believed in. And then I began to see the effect that my interpretation, Peter's and my interpretation of Draupadi, was doing to women across the world, very different women from Aboriginals in Perth to very distinguished Sorbonne students to everything in between. And it was those five years that were pivotal in making me coalesce my very strong feelings for justice and human rights, my still nascent political beliefs and ideologies, my ethical framework, and my ability as an artist, not only as a dancer, but as an artist using all the art forms to reach out to people to talk about things that mattered. And many senses, all the work that I have done since 1990 has seen this coming together of the strands of activism and political belief, giving the voice to the voiceless, and pitching myself wherever I thought I could make a change and where justice was needed. And it has taken me on very, very different journeys. Forgive me, I have a cold, so I'm going to be blowing my nose periodically. In 2005, my children were both in school, my son was in college, and their friends used to come to my house all the time. And the conversations at dinner in my house when I was growing up, when my children were growing up, 
were always conversations about what was happening in the world, the world of science, the world of politics, the world of art. And children were always included in the conversations. And my children were being brought up like that to, to have an opinion, to, to look into the various sides of a story and to form an opinion based on that. And I found that their friends, even though they came from exceptionally educated families, really didn't have a clue about what India was like. They genuinely believed in the now neoliberal heaven that we were living in 2005, six that the greatest decision that they would have to make, the greatest choice that they would have to make when they grew up was to choose between Nike and Adidas or between Ben and Jerry's ice cream and some other ice cream. And I thought, we talk of the demographic dividend that we have. We talk of the great advantage we have because we have a young population that will fuel India's dreams into the future. And yet, if this population is completely unaware of what the real India is, how are they going to go into leadership positions? Now at this time, my great friend Harsh Mandar, who resigned from the IAS during the 2002 genocide in Gujarat, which also threw me into a much deeper political agenda. He had just written a book called Unheard Voices, describing 10, no, 20 people that he had met in his 20 years in the IAS who had fought for issues larger than their personal issues. Some had won, some had lost, but there were stories of grit. There were stories of hope. There were stories of justice. And I thought, I need to do something. And I created a performance piece in Hindi and English called Ansuni or Unheard Voices taking five of these stories and took it pro bono to 120 into quote, elite schools and colleges, throwing this at them and then having a discussion and trying to get them to understand their privilege and the necessity of their pitching in for change. I'm going to show you one section, I have selected this particular section because my friend Bezwada Wilson, who fights for manual scavengers and the Dalits, is today on, I think, his 66th day of a national campaign that he is running to try and say Dalit lives matter and that two or three Dalits are lowered into sewers every day and die in spite of every kind of law that we have passed, there is a blindness to it. And this piece has Bezwara Wilson in it. And what we did is we very often brought the characters that we represented, the real people, to talk to the audiences across the country. And I'm going to share this one with you. Lassan. The Manual Scavengers Prohibition Act, 1993, Section 1. It is hereby stated that it is against the law to employ anyone for the job of carrying human excreta. Such employment will be punishable by law. Mini! Babu! Kasi! Chechi! Narayani Amma! Aajwa, kisi ka kaam nahi hai?
इस शरीर से छुटकारा नहीं मिलता ये शरीर बांस भरी बदबू से लथपथ पीछा ही न छोड़े कितनी बार नहा लो रगड़ लो इसे इससे छुटकारा पाना तो आसान नहीं है मेरे नथनों में इसके सिवाय कुछ भी तो नहीं है और बारिश में जब दो साल का हुआ तो मेरी बहन को मुंह का कैंसर हो गया सालों से सुपारी जो वो चबाती थी उसकी तबीयत बिगड़ती गई और बस दो महीने में वो गुजर गई नहीं जानती थी कैसा था वो सब जानती भी थी और अनजान भी थी ऐसा कभी नहीं किया था मुझे इन नाम में मिले थे टट्टी के ढेर और मखिया हर तरफ टट्टी ही टट्टी पाखानों के अंदर भी बाहर भी जिन्हें जल्दी जाना होता वो तो पाखानों के बाहर ही कर देते थे कभी कभी टखनों तक ढेर होता बदबू से सिर चकराने लगता सिर पर करीब दस किलो टट्टी ढोनी पड़ती अरे इतनी शिकायत क्या करती है तुम ढंग से काम करो इसलिए तो सरकार ने तुम्हें दस्ताने और ठेला गाड़ी दी है सालों को काम ही नहीं करना है दस्ताने और ठेले गाड़ी वो तो आदमियों को मिले हम भला औरतों को क्यों मैंने चौदह साल काम किया रोजाना उल्टी आती कभी टट्टी की बदबू से या फिर लगा तार पैर भारी होने के कारण पहना जब सत्रह साल का हुआ तो मेरे मर्द को लखवा मार गया म्यूनिसपाली इंस्पेक्टर से जाके हाथ जोड़े विनती की कि लगा दो मेरे बेटे को मेरी जगह पर एन टी रामा राव है ना उसने इस तरह नौकरी लगाने पर रोक डाल दी थी तभी इंस्पेक्टर ने बीस हजार रुपए मांगे नौकरी देने पर बीस हजार रुपए सर पर धोने की शानदार कीमत हमने पेन्ना के लिए बस्ती में ही चाय की दुकान खोल दी अपने जैसे लोगों के बीच में और उसकी चाय की दुकान चल निकली कोई ऊंच नीच नहीं यहाँ 
हर एक के लिए सब के लिए एक जैसा कप है यहाँ बेटी की शादी का क्या हुआ अम्मा मैं भी तुम्हारी ही जात का हूँ अम्मा और इस काम की गलाजत मैं खूब जानता हूँ मैं इसलिए मैं तुम्हारी मदद करने आया हूँ अम्मा क्या मतलब है तुम्हारा हुँ? क्या मतलब है तुम्हारी हम तुम्हें धंधा वाले नजर आते हैं इज्जतदार लोग हैं हम तुम्हारी कोई दया व्या हमें भी चाहिए चलो निकलो यहाँ से आ जाते हैं कहा से लेकिन उसने हिम्मत नहीं हारी वो लगातार आता रहा सबको मनाता रहा आखिर हमने भी उसको अपने घर चाय पीने के लिए बुला ही लिया उसकी बातें सुनकर हम दंग रह गए उनमें गुस्सा था दर्द और समझ भी मेरे पिताजी कोलार गोल माइस में मेला उठाने की नौकरी करते किसी तरह माली बन गए मेरे जन्म से पहले मेरे पिताजी चर्च से जुड़े और मैंने सेमिनरी में जाना शुरू किया वहां भी मैंने चुकी तक किया और मैंने दोने वालों के हालात को देखा मुझसे रहा नहीं गया और मैं पादरियों से झगड़ा कि बंद करवा दो इन लोगों से सब काम मगर वे मेरी बात सुनने को तैयार ही नहीं ये गलाजत बड़े काम को बंद करने के लिए मैंने आपसे एकता बनाने की कोशिश की तो फाधर ने मुझे उठा के चर्च से बाहर ही फेंक दिया उन्हें लगता था कि मैं ऐसी बातें कर करके उन्हें शर्मिंदा कर रहा हूं उन्हें बेइज्जत कर रहा हूं सन उन्नीस में मैंने एक जनहित याचिका दर्ज की इन लोगों को दूसरे काम धंधों में लगाने जाने की हक की लड़ाई हम कोर्ट से जीत गए नवयुवानों ने शौचालय में काम करना बंद कर दिया और चीजें बेहतर होने लगी तभी सन उन्नीस में सफाई कर्मचारियों की हड़ताल हो गई और प्रबंधकों ने तुरंत ही हमारी बिरादरी के सभी नौ युवाओं को दोबारा उनकी सुखी तक दिया और मैंने धोने के काम में लगा दिया घड़ी की विडंबना भी तो देखिए कैसे कल तक जिनके साथ बैठकर हम काम किया करते थे अब उन्हीं की टट्टियों को इन हाथों से उठाना था मुझे संघर्ष करते हुए पंद्रह साल हो गए ये गलाजत और अन्याय पर जिंदगी से लड़ने के लिए आखिर हम दलितों ने मिलके ह्यूमन राइट ग्रुप बना लिया क्योंकि हमें हमारा हक नहीं ना यू आर कॉर्डली इनवाइटेड टू द फर्स्ट नेशनल दलित ह्यूमन राइट्स कॉन्फ्रेंस Justice Ramaswamy and Shrimadi Mohini Giri have kindly agreed to be present. Nyay Murthy Ramaswamy ji, Shrimadi Mohini Giri ji, Atithiyo, Bhai or Bhai. Ha. मैंने मैंने पूरी जिंदगी अपने इन्हीं दोनों हाथों से दूसरों की टट्टी सर पर धोई है हाँ मेरे हाथों नाखूनों बालों की बदबू से छुटकारा पाना आसान नहीं है बल्कि नामुमकिन है लेकिन मैं शर्मिंदा नहीं हूं क्यों हूं शर्मिंदा तो आपको आना चाहिए कभी महान कहलाने वाले आप लोग इज्जतदार पढ़े लिखे कुलीन सम्मानित 
आपने अपने ही अपने ही भाई और बहनों से ये काम करवाया तो शर्मिंदा मैं क्यों शर्मिंदा तो आपको होना चाहिए सर्वेक्षण के अनुसार उन्नीस में सर पर मेला ढोने वालों की संख्या पांच लाख अट्ठासी हजार थी सन 2001 में वो संख्या बढ़कर आठ लाख हो गई जिनमें से 80 प्रतिशत महिलाएं एवं बालिकाएं Ansuni had an extraordinary effect on the schools and colleges where we took it. Children assumed that issues like this, or issues of Muslim riot victims like Malika B, not getting justice, or children with leprosy being treated the way they were, that all of this had changed overnight in 1947 when we became independent. we had children weeping we had children getting hysterical we had teachers weeping we started a volunteers movement and we said that if you want to be part of this change you can be at any level do simple things ask the person who comes to work at your house whether her children need help in english or science or maths talk to people if there's a slum near your house and if you are a sports buff go and play with them go and teach them football or badminton or whatever it is teach children of your malis in school talk to them make them feel human and if you want to work in a more organized way we will give you a list of ngos who are looking for volunteers and you can volunteer with them by the end of 120 performances we had 7000 individual volunteers and today 17 years later there are still over 10 schools which run ansuni schools parallel to their own schools giving marginalized children all the same amenities and integrating them as they go on into their own schools and into their own curricula <laughs> in many ways things have just become worse the divisions in society as bakran said have become even bigger chasms and the work needs to just continue i used to often wonder if entering politics was the only way of actually bringing forward lasting change and so from about 2004 whenever i went around the country lecturing i would say to people i'm looking for 200 volunteers who will say to me that we are willing to give up seven or eight years of our life and what we will do is we will work in the constituency from where we will stand we will work for two or three years we will gain the confidence of the people whom we want to represent and then if we get elected we will forget politics we will only concentrate on governance i went around for five years did not actually get a single person to commit this time or this effort So in 2009, <coughs> backed by colleagues from various NGOs and human rights groups in Ahmedabad, I decided to stand as an independent candidate in the elections as a member of parliament against L K Advani. Advani had been the chosen elected representative from the Gandhi Nagar Ahmedabad constituency where I live. for over 20 years nobody that i spoke to had ever actually seen him or heard him in person nobody could tell me if he had actually come and looked into the issues that they faced and i decided to run a very different campaign the first thing i decided to do was that i would put in all my funding whatever i got and whatever i spent on the internet on a daily basis so that people knew what transparency could mean in an election whether it was possible at all and the second thing i decided was that i would try and meet as many people in my constituency my constituency was huge it had 16 lakhs people 
But in the 30 days that I campaigned, I managed to meet and have notes on 2 lakh people and what their issues were. The two political parties became like an old boys club. They ganged up against me when I would go to the election commission about both Advani and Mr. Patel, who were standing for the Congress breaking codes of conduct. My complaint wouldn't be taken seriously. They would not answer for 15 days. But if they complained of an infringement, which was actually not an infringement, I would have election commission people descend on me to stop me from campaigning. Can you actually do this? Sorry, I have six dogs and I have locked them out and they are protesting. Uh, I lost the election. I lost my deposit. And I saw why elections are so not free. A lot of the people I went to meet and spoke to who had promised to vote for me, came out saying we were terrified because there was party workers inside and they were watching us. Now, imagine this. The so-called secret ballot is a table with a little cardboard this high. If on the electronic voting machine, your elbow can be seen from here up. So if you are one, which was BJP, or two, which was Congress, nobody standing outside could see which button you were pressing. But if you were 15, which I was, then they could know that I was not voting for the two main parties. I had women come to me and say, that man who was standing inside illegally, because they are not supposed to be inside, can raise my basti tomorrow. What do I do? Yes, I know that you will do something. And I know that with them, the same thing will continue all the time. But what do I do? I'm terrified. In the Muslim areas where people had gone after 2002, where I had worked very much, I had uh, taken their cause and gone to the High Court and the Supreme Court. They knew me very well. Uh, I went and I said, what happened? And they said, Kal bhai aaye the aur 500 rupee diye aur biryani khilai to hum biradari ko kaise tode. And I said to them that, you know, you know that your biradari hasn't done anything. You are in exactly the same ghetto situation that you have been for years. So why didn't you? Our voting isn't fair. Our voting is supervised by people whose jobs depend on the party that is ruling. There are teachers, there are bankers, there are petty officials who are in each of the booths. They watch because they are from the same ilaka. They watch who is coming and who is voting. And the reprimand is very fast and very thorough. I understood that while this had been the most amazing learning curve of my life, that something needs to change very fundamentally about the process of our electoral politics. And now, especially with EVMs and all the doubts that are raised about EVMs, and I have seen TED talks and, and scientists talking about how EVMs can be manipulated, it becomes even more difficult. What has this meant in my life? Have I accepted defeat? Have I given up? How can one? In today's context, whether you face it or not, every decision you take is in fact a political decision. The fact that I'm wearing handloom and not polyester is a political decision. The fact that I'm wearing beads and wood and not gold or platinum is a political decision. The fact that I try and eat locally grown vegetables is a political decision of whether I use solar energy to heat my hot water or run my house is a political decision. Which kind of car I buy is a political decision. What technology I use to build my theater is a political decision. Because there are no silos and we need to understand that and we need to understand 
that each of our decisions, what career we choose, whether we decide to bribe people to get an advantage or not, are all part of the society that we are making and we live in. And we complain about that society all the time. We, we complain, we point fingers, we say how unfair it is and so on. But are we not part of that very society? And are we not responsible for taking whatever small stance we can to be that change? I'm going to show you another piece which was also created during the lockdown period. It was created for World Water Day. And Darpana and I have worked very closely with environmental issues, uh, including going into slums and uh, creating street plays about diabetes and cervical cancer, developing board games about cervical cancer that women actually break their taboo on talking about it and play a game that teaches them how to keep check on what is happening with their cervix. Uh, and this is a piece that was based on the poem of a Jamaican British writer called John Agard and was created, as I said, for World Water Day, but is now being used by the United Nations Environment Programs and other major programs as a three minute film of how art can talk about these issues. Can I have Aaron? an earth whose rainforest lungs breathe a tale of waste. Should we dance? Or break into gnashing of teeth at the news of our inheritance? should inherit an earth where the grass goes nostalgic at the mere mention of green and the sky looks out of its depth when reminded of blue should we dance or break into gnashing of teeth at the news of our inheritance children of the meek should inherit such an earth then we ask of the future one question should we dance or break into gnashing of teeth at the news of our inheritance Strategies have to change depending on the external situation, depending on 
who is powerful, whether you want to be confrontational. There are times when one needs to be confrontational. There are other times like these when strategies need to be different. But I feel one can always talk about and bring note to what we think needs bringing note to, to what we think we can contribute to change, to improve, to open windows in people's lives. And I think it is up to each of us to do it in whichever way we can. Can parents bring up children not to be girl or boy or Hindu or Muslim or upper class or lower class or Dalit or Kshatriya? Even doing that would be such a major impact. There are more and more people today who are not using their second names because they don't want a caste attached. And this is not only Dalit people. I have a lot of friends who have taken that decision not to be accepted because they are upper caste. There are more and more women, more and more gay people who are choosing lifestyles that are different by coming out bravely and talking about that, we are bringing about a change. By calling out every time a racist slur is used as a joke, we are calling out the change. By not saying him when we mean him and her, we are calling out patriarchy. I have shown you some very grim stuff stuff that makes you think, but we also do fun stuff. Do you think we can have gender bender, Vasan? Uh, this piece was done as a piece to get children to think of gender biases and patriarchy in schools. And it has gone to many, many thousands of children. And I thought I should uh, also show you the fun side of using the arts for society and change. We are going to play a game. I'm going to ask you to shut your eyes tight. Like that. Yes, all of you. And I'm going to say some words and you will say what pops into your mind. Ready? Doctor. Surgeon. Anthropologist. Marine biologist. Nurse. Okay. Isn't this what came to your mind? But what if... This is what is gender injustice. This is gendery, and we have all part of it. You know, when you first see a person, you see girl or boy, man or woman. And with this comes this whole host of adjectives. If it's a man, strong, determined, taking decisions. And if it's a girl, delicate, serving, polite, smiling. I've been fighting this since I was very young, five years old, when I first noticed it. And you will fight it too, as did these people. Stereotypes. We have them all around us and we live with them. If you're a girl, you are this, this, and this. If you're a boy, you are this, this, and this. But hey, we don't have only one identity. Yes, I'm a woman, but my favorite color is green. I love pizza. I do not like football. I uh, love reading books. I love Sherlock Holmes. Uh, I love wearing different earrings in different ears. So I have, like you, have many different identities. 
but the stereotypes even go into our language. Take Gujarati, for example. Take the word bar, strength, and abar, weakness. So what is a woman? A woman is called abra. Or take khatlo and khatli. A khatlo is a big, strong bed, and a khatli is a poor, delicate one. So, is this a problem? Of course this is a problem. Can kids change it? Of course you can change it. And we must, because it limits us. This kind of stereotyping limits us, limits our growth, limits where we want to be, who we want to be. So you need to fight it anywhere you see it. And it's everywhere. Tell me, does your mother treat you and your sister differently? Do your parents treat you and your brother differently? In school, do girls get pink and boys get blue? Do the pictures in your textbook show boys as active and girls as playing or picking flowers? So, wherever it is, question it. Do not limit yourself to these words. Scream it out, change it. How can you use the arts? Oh, the arts are an amazing language. I'm going to take you to gully boys. Yes, I worked with them to talk about gender all across America. shout you have to bring notice to this injustice however small in every way if somebody says mankind say stop humanity if somebody says actor and actress say stop actors you can go to your teacher and point out when the textbook is wrong or when she or he is wrong you can stop a friend and say don't say that because that is stereotypical listen you don't all need to be performers. You can be whatever you want. You can be a sports person, or you can be a painter, or you can be uh, an accountant. But each of us every day needs to bring to notice the injustice and change it. Listen, you can change the world. So make the difference at last and be free. <laughs> That's a more cheerful note, isn't it, to end with? I have shared my work because I think that without seeing my work, what I say makes less sense. After all, I communicate a lot through the arts, writing and so on, of course, but through the arts and as Professor Bapat represented creativity and politics and society and I believe that my work also is at the fulcrum of those crossovers I thought I should be showing you work I did ask Makarand whether we would have a question and answer and he said no but I'm done and if Makarand wants he can ask uh, and you can put it type it onto your computer screens and Makarand can ask but it's up to him thank you for being with me Makrand, over to you. 
Prakrant has left. Uh, no, no, I'm there. I, I, I'm you know, trying to come back. Yeah. No, as I said, we, we, we will not take question, question and what we have been do, doing. But the session was absolutely excellent. We could guess what you were trying, you have been trying to do, and your experiences uh, during the elections were most revealing also. And uh, that that I did not remember that I I I, I mean I must that I had the audacity to stand against Advani. <laughs> yeah, no, I must have read about it. I mean, we must have discussed it at that time, but it's long time back. Uh, so I would now uh, I very much thank you for giving us such a uh, lecture, which will make everybody think about all these laws and whether they are gender, caste class as you very rightly said and the way you made us think about what kind of politics be, is being played here on ground level and what change can we do it as an individual without i mean democracy is not limited only to the elections and what what can we do in other democratic uh, ways so i would now request uh, mr gajanan paranspe to uh, offer vote of thanks gajanan will you please the take over yeah. Anuvam, please start his uh, video. If he's not able to, then I will have to give it. Yeah. Um, Gajanan Paranspe seems to just have gotten disconnected right now. No, no, I am, I am on the on, on no. line. That's line. a video. Yeah, then, 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 then please, please uh, switch on your camera, Gajanan. Yeah, it has... Huh. Stop video ho gaya hoga. You you start the video. Start video ho gaya. You cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. This ah, table is coming in. Yes, you you will have to start it. Anupam has to start this. The host has asked to start your video. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now it is started. Yeah. I think yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you, hmm. Mitro. अपने पशी जतन करूँ थे वह ऐसे जो विचार अतस सुश्री मल्लिका सारा भाई यानी अपने समोर मानले ते सुई त्रित्य अपने परिंत पोसले ऐसा मरा विश्वास बढ़ते हैं पोसोड़े में दे अनेक अंश सरकारी प्राप्त जाने लगे समाज अत्यंत विविध घटकाम में दे देवान घेवान करो पहाड़ रहे उपक्रमान ना प्राच फाउंडेशन चस संचालिका श्रीमती परिमल सोमगरी जिनकी मदद हो ये व्याख्यान माला कार्यान्वित करने का आयोजन न्यूनतम प्रबंध है अतः पुनः सहकार्य लाभ है क्या बरोबरी ना साधना साप्ताहिक पाक्षिक परिवर्तन से वाट सरू मासिक आंदोलन शास्त्रों विकास सर्टी सर्व मराठी अनि इंग्रजी बुद्धिमत्ता पत्र पंचायत तसल ज्ञात अथवा अज्ञात व्यक्ति संस्था शे सर्वांश सहकार्य लाभ नहीं है ये सर्वांश भी मना पसुन आभार मंतु सर्वांना धन्यवाद देतो अने आशा है कार्यक्रम संपला आशा जाहिर कर दो धन्यवाद। थैंक यू गजानन। नानुबाब विल यू प्लीज स्विच ऑन द स्विच ऑफ द लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग। डन। 